Hello and welcome to the PowerPoint and presentation on social work competencies and practicum behaviors. My name is Jody Papello and I'm the Director of Field Education and a Clinical Assessment Professor at McMurray College. And it is my job to coordinate the field experience with the agency and field instructor. My hope is that this PowerPoint will provide an overview of the importance of social work education competencies and practice behaviors. What I hope to do is to introduce you to the idea of competencies and behaviors to help you understand the importance of them. For us at McMurray College, we are an accredited program under the Council on Social Work Education. And through our accreditation with the CSWE, we have expectations that we will create educational standards for our program. What the accreditation does is help guide that process through competencies and through behaviors that are expected of any student engaging in a social work program, whether that be at the undergraduate or graduate level. Essentially, the CSWE outlines professional competencies and practice behaviors for social work students. These make sure that students are prepared at the undergraduate level for our program for generalist practice of social work. Essentially, that any student graduating from any accredited program across the United States all has a basic level of proficiency in these competencies and behaviors. What I would like to introduce for you today is the idea that this curriculum is something of a blending between academic language and practical language out in the field. And that is where we look at the learning contract that we have for our students in an effort to blend what's really going on in the agency with what goes on for us academically. Essentially, these guides are found through the educational policy and accreditation standards and with these EPOS, they guide our process with our students. Generally, before practicum even starts, all of our coursework outlines competencies and behaviors that we have in our classes. So from the freshman year to the senior year, we have assignments, papers, exams, projects, and portfolios that all test our students, so to speak, on their knowledge, values, skills, and their ability to cognitively and affectively process holistic integration, so to speak, of these behaviors and competencies. When you look at field practicum, it's a unique opportunity for students to take everything they've learned from their freshman to their senior year and apply it to real life simulated situations, whether it be simulated or in, in the field with direct con client contact. And so essentially at that opportunity, we use the learning contracts, the practicum experiences and field seminar class to blend with your interactions with these students to help bridge, so to speak, the behaviors and competencies with direct practice. And essentially it's a fantastic opportunity to witness student transformation from student to professional. With this then our curriculum is unique in the way that we are able to kind of connect, so to speak, the learning behaviors and competencies with the actual um, interactions at your agency. So when we talk about accreditation and when we talk about our standards, we're outlining really parameters for explicit curriculum. So what are they learning? What are they actually doing in your agencies? There are nine core competencies with our accreditation standards. And within each of those competencies, there are various behaviors or practice behaviors, so to speak, 31 in total. Essentially, it's similar to nine goals with 31 objectives when we think about social work language. And so what that does then is provides fairly detailed behaviors we hope students have at the undergraduate level in social work. When you think about the learning contract, it starts off with competency one, it the ability for students to demonstrate ethical and professional behavior. Within this competency, we hope that students are able to express a variety of soft and hard skills to highlight professional social work. The first one is making ethical decisions, abiding by the code of ethics for us as social workers, but also the ethics and the policies at your agency whether that be for a specific population or if it's just a handbook of policies and codes for your agency. And so a specific measurable um, learning objective might be for them to read through and ask questions on your policies. Another one is we hope our students are able to reflect and self-regulate. 
So essentially they're students, right? But they're blending and they're becoming professionals. And so what we want to see is that growth, that self-reflection on who they are as a person individually, but how they're also entering a profession of um, like-minded kind of standards and expectations. We hope that they uh, ex exhibit behaviors, whether it be through appearance or written or oral communications or electronic communications that are professional in demeanor, um, that follow your policies, protocols and standards, and again, some of those soft skills that they hopefully have um, at the senior level. Behavior four, we hope that technology is something that is addressed um, there at your agency or the opportunity to have conversations about technology at your agency and that students utilize them appropriately and ethically, whether it be a social media policy that they understand and abide by or you know, using uh, correct confidential logins and outs for software. And then the fifth aspect of this competency is that we hope they meet with you weekly to obtain supervision and they're constantly consulting with you uh, we understand that social work doesn't exist in a vacuum and that we are working and learning con consistently, regularly throughout the course of our careers and that they are able to meet with you and that that is part of being a professional social worker. All of these together, these five behaviors then objectify competency one. Competency two is the ability for students to engage in diversity and difference in practice. What are we saying here? It's essentially, this PowerPoint hopes to break down this academic language. The first thing we want students to be able to do is just communicate an understanding of difference and diversity. Your agency at the micro, meso, and macro level is operating to help a particular population. We want them to be able to understand what's going on for that population. We also want students then in behavior seven to present themselves as learners. No one's an expert in any issue of diversity and difference. We're always going to the client. What is your experience with this diversity and with this difference? We're hoping students are able to do that through direct contact um, with clients or with people that are working with clients or observation of such things in order to ask clients about their own experiences. The next part of this competency then is for students to apply self-awareness and regulation to understand how we all grow up in a culture that has biases and stereotypes that are oppressive in nature. And we're hoping that they're able to, to, while they're working with these clients, work through any of those biases that might pop up um, with their particular population and communicate with you about that during supervision, discuss any struggles they're having or successes they're having and trying to understand people from their own worldview and their own perspective. And then ultimately, you know, engage in differences with practice. As we pull this out to more of a meta level, ultimately you're, you're advancing human rights by not engaging in oppressive actions, by treating clients as the experts in their own lives, then we can ad adjust for social justice, environmental justice, economic justice, and promote the idea that all human beings have basic level of rights. So again, at the more macro level, uh, what this looks like for students. When we think about the individualized behaviors that go on for this competency, we want students to pretty much just have an understanding of this justice principle and to advocate for human rights at that level of what your agency does. So whether that's just direct practice or is that going to a lobby day or communicating with a legislator about uh, funding or policies. So really, we just want them to be able to see that big picture and that if they have the opportunity to engage in such practices for advancing social, economic and environmental justice. Again, whether that be writing a letter, signing a petition, reading a policy, reading a law that's currently um, in legislation so that they're able to kind of see the, the advancement of human rights happens at all levels, at the one on one level, working with clients, but also at that global perspective. Competency four shifts gears a little bit, and this is where we're looking at practice informed research and research informed practice. A lot of people get tripped up with the word research here, a lot of individuals. We're not talking about research in the sense that they're doing um, an entire project based on that, but essentially everything we do um, uses practice experience in theory to inquire or try to understand scientific inquiry and research. And inquiry is he key here. We're always trying to understand um, what's going on for a client in their system at the micro, meso, macro level. And then we want students to critically think about and analyze any data that they have access to um, and or findings that are available at your agency. So whether that be just statistics, basic statistics that you keep, um, 
program evaluations, anything that you look at quantitative and qualitative information. And then we want students to be able to translate that those findings into how to make practice policy and service delivery better. A lot of these things agencies are doing already automatically, whether that be keeping track of numbers for the United Way or program evaluations for you know, counselors themselves, social workers themselves, or for your directors. Um, essentially, we just want them to be able to look at numbers, look at data, and how does that data then drive your interactions at the agency? So again, this can be um, scientific, so to speak, or this can also just be general assessment of information and evalu evaluation of information. So please do not get um, intimidated by the word research. Not every agency is doing literal research here. It's a, a general broad stroke term that we're using here to encompass all data, all information that we're gathering at the micro, meso, and macro level. As we move on into competency five, we're talking about policy practice. Essentially, all agencies are engaging in policy practice. We would like students to identify at the local, state, and federal level what policies or legislation guides the interaction of your agency. So whether you be a private or a pub public institution, how does that then impact service delivery and access to social services? For example, in the state of Illinois, without a budget for two years, there's clearly been policy at the state level that has impacted the well-being of services that students have access to and don't have access to in Illinois. What we want is for students to kind of see the connection between uh, policies, between funding levels, and how all of those things come together. And we hope that in Behavior 15, they're able to assess how these policies then impact in the access that, that individual clients and communities have to social services. So we're wanting to then just build the bridge from the micro and meso kind of interactions with clients. How does big policy, how does macro level work um, interact with that? And then in the last behavior, well, we're hoping that they're critically thinking about that, analyzing or formulating or advocating for policies that then advance human rights, that advance the opportunity for clients and, and or communities to receive justice. And so we just, again, want them to see that whole bridge, the big picture, and the connections amongst all that. Sometimes this is a, a meeting with a director or an executive um, director to um, kind of bridge that all together for a student. It might not be with you as the field instructor. Competencies six through nine really address the helping process. So from engagement to evaluation, how does the student um, measure up, so to speak, with those behaviors. So we're looking at micro, meso, and macro, so it's not necessary that students are, are doing one-on-one -on -one counseling. It's not necessary that they're only doing policy work. But what we're looking at is their ability here in Competency 6 to engage. So the first thing is, is we want all of our students to utilize HIBSI, Human Behavior and the Social Environment Principles, to prepare for interactions with clients and communities. And then we want to see their ability to use empathy, reflection, or interpersonal skills to engage with such clients. So are they reading and preparing before meetings? Are they um, digging into specific population um, issues of particular clientele, whether that be persons with disabilities or domestic violence clients? We want them to prepare. The next competency addresses assessment. So whether it be at the micro, meso, macro level, we want students to be able to collect and organize data. So again, if that's preparing for a meeting, are they able to collect information about what's gone on in meetings in the past, how the agenda is going to impact the current meeting? Um, is that collecting data and assessment for individual clients or group? And again, we want this to all be in the context of HIBSI, of human behavior in the social environment. We want them to understand that theoretical frameworks that they've learned in the past apply. We want them to work on mutually identified goals and or objectives through this assessment. So after we've asses assessed, we understand the strengths and needs of the current issue, then we're able to, in Behavior 22, select appropriate interventions um, and or actions based on such assessment, also research knowledge, and values and preferences of clients and constituents. Essentially, we're looking for that blend of cognitive, critical thinking, and effective processing to assess and then prepare for competency eight, which is intervention at the micro, meso, and macro level. We're hoping students then move forward in choosing and implementing the correct interventions and setting up goals and objectives that enhance the client's um, needs and the community's needs, um, their ability to 
choose things that work for the client. Again, as we're intervening, we're always applying the context of environment from that micro, meso, macro level person and environment. Are they able to then work with clients and communities um, in that framework and understanding the process? We're also hopeful that students use other professionals as collaboration. Are they working with the criminal justice system? Are they working with other agencies so that they can help achieve those outcomes, whether that be through referrals or contact and communication? We also would like students to be able to negotiate and advocate for clients. We understand as social workers that have been in the field that, that everything doesn't exist in a beautiful timeline and go smoothly. So as social work students hit bumps in the roads, are they able to negotiate and mediate some of those bumps with clients and advocate always for the, the best needs of the client? And then as they transition towards evaluation, towards um, assessment, we're looking at them to transition endings and uh, a, you know, reach those agreed upon goals. Are they meeting them? Aren't they? Do they need to re-adjust um, goals and objectives? And so we know it's not a straight line. We see that it's fluid. It moves back and forth the helping process. Are students able to help guide that process and move that forward? Which leads us to our last competency evaluation. Again, that's always constantly happening. We're always evaluating. We're always assessing. But here we want to look for the students' abilities to use um, and select appropriate methods, whether that be evaluation tools that you have at your agency there, program evaluation or goal evaluations, um, understanding that goal assessment is always done in, in an environmental kind of process. We're always looking at HIBZ from the entire helping process. And then for their ability to analyze or monitor their interventions and their programs. You know, is this working? Isn't this working? How do we need to change it and tweak it? And so are they able to critically think and effectively process through that? And then also for them to use those findings to improve practice and behavior 31. These competencies and practice behaviors set really a standard and guide our curriculum, but they also guide our field experience. And they serve as an opportunity to grade the students, so to speak. So as they're gaining these practical skills at a generalist undergraduate level, their ability to practice them in real life with your agency then gives them this unique opportunity to start connecting theory with practice. And so again, this is the movement from student to professional. Our learning contract outlines how to guide this specifically for your agency. So you are able to create smart objectives that match up with these behaviors and competencies, but you can tweak it to personalize it to your agency. And so you can take practicum experiences and kind of build that all together to create a learning model for students. Your interaction with them is also key here to help bridge some of this content from the academic level to the practical level out in the field. What does that look like? I also do this in, in field seminar and through my interactions and communications with students um, to kind of bridge all of this together as well. And so hopefully with you as the field instructor on daily, you know, weekly supervision with me on the weekly seminars, biweekly seminars, we are able to then put this all together so that students can see how they are generalist practitioners in all of these areas. For you as the field instructor, again, I'd like to thank you for your commitment to helping create the opportunity for these competencies and practice behaviors to be part of a student and for your valuable time. We appreciate your guidance and your willingness to work with us and understand the academic nature of these field placements. I am here for you at any time for any of the questions that might pop up in reference to the learning contract or to any of these practicum competencies and behaviors as they are fairly academic in nature. Uh, the language of them can feel and can be quite um, daunting. And so please feel free to contact me with any time, at any time with any questions or even comments that you have uh, about accreditation itself or about the policies that we have for our students. I can be reached at this information below at any time, and I appreciate so much the work that you do for us. Thank you.